Hello, this is Crypto CJ. It's a trade of the day, Friday afternoon Zoom edition. And Bitcoin's been, been pretty mellow this week. We had some financial data come out on Wednesday and the mark kind of market kind of twitched a little bit and then went back to where it was going. Bitcoin is struggling to hold 29K and uh, Ethereum's dropped around to 1850, which is a support slash resistance level we looked at a few weeks ago. Let's go to the chart and check it out. Okay, should be on my Bitcoin. I think I'm on the eight hour. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I get a little electronic blob right in front of my chart when I when I switch over to screen sharing. So anyway, that's why I have to ask you guys. Plus to make sure I'm actually screen sharing. So let me move my head down here. And here we are at the bottom of this range. I drew this in last week, maybe the week before. 29K is the bottom. I think 31.5 is the top. We've been putzing around here since June 23rd, so about five weeks. And we can't seem to, to break 30K, which I was hoping was going to hold as support. It appears to be resistance now. We had a few stabs at it. Um, Sunday. And then that's when we lost it. We had a pump here on uh, on Wednesday morning. Uh, that's when the uh, the uh, the financial news came out. Twenty five basis point uh, interest rate increase, which was as expected. So not a whole lot happened on Ethereum. Got a little different structure drawn here. Got this range down here where I'm looking to buy longs if it gets towards the bottom of this range. The, uh, I've got it at 1840 at the moment. And then I'm looking to to short up here around 2000. So I've been trading this range on Ethereum. It's around, right around 7%. Yeah, give or take 7, 8%. And then on Bitcoin, Should be more consistent. My structure is about the same, seven, eight percent. I've shorted here. I got in a nice short a couple of weeks ago. It's doing well. I took some longs, maybe a little too soon here and here, and they're non profit yet, but we'll see. And that's sort of uh, how I do swing trading um, using leverage, but I'm not that experienced at it, so I'm not necessarily teaching it. I'm just uh, sharing what I, the approach I'm using. And we'll go into uh, some more details on day trading shortly. Any comments, questions, irresponsible speculations regarding the market overall, Bitcoin, Ethereum? Okay, let's see. You no, know, that's, just, that's just very helpful with um, your ranges with the support and resistance and things. And okay. where you do the those shorts and longs thank you yeah um yeah glad to help and if you want to set alerts on these you know you can look at these and determine where you'd want to get in you just do a price alert right click add an alert i do mine at you know round numbers like i probably go 29 100 something like that um, and then this isn't necessarily an information source like altcoin alert. So I would probably call this, um, I don't know, long entry, short entry, probably long entry or ladder by. Yeah. So something like that ladder by long. And you can set up your alert that way. Um, and there are, more compl complicated ways to do it, but the easiest way is just to set two alerts, one here and one here. So. Okay, thank you, I appreciate that. All right, glad to help. Any other questions before we move on to altcoin alert? Okay, here we are on altcoin alert. I'm on the altcoin radar layout. I want all the information, all the all the columns I'm gonna, I just refreshed. My first sort is usually an AA score. So I'm gonna click on that. 
looking for values usually 80 and higher to go long. And this one's popped up on my radar a few times in the past few months, XYO Network. I don't think one can trade leverage on this, so it's not something I usually trade myself. But I looked at the chart, I recall it being in Coinbase, and I thought I might have some new folks on here. So let's go ahead and analyze a, a spot chart. And we'll, we'll go from, we'll, we'll do that first, and then we'll look at some, some leverage options for some other coins. So I'm on the five minute on XYO. I'm looking to see if I'm in a dip sequence. We're not at the moment. We're actually at the worst possible place to be. We're in no man's land on this SMA line, just simple moving average, right in the middle of these Bollinger Bands. And so this is not a good entry. I'm trying to see if we have an example of a one, two, three dip. Not really seeing one. Yeah. So with that in mind, let's look at support and resistance on this. And we, we were looking at a much longer time frame before with Ethereum and Bitcoin. Now we're on a five minute chart. So you know the, the shorter time frame you're on, the, the less persuasive in my mind support and resistance is, but it's much better than nothing. So we've got some support here right around uh, 0.0036. So I can draw that you know, right, right about here. See, we have a few touches here, a few touches here, and we're above that at the moment. So I would probably put a, a price alert right about here at the bottom of this Bollinger Band. Add an alert, 365, and this is gonna be an AA score purchase. So when that alert triggers, Make sure you got your notifications. So for me, my standard go-to on manual trades is notify in my app on my phone, show pop-up on my desktop computer, and play a sound. I usually use three notes reverb, but use whichever one you like. Uh, some of these are pretty obnoxious, so you might want to test them first. This alarm clock is no fun. You don't want that one. So... <laughs> um, all right, so that's how you do that. But I prefer indicator alerts on the 15 minute chart. So we're gonna head over there. We're looking at a couple options. I like dip trades after they've dropped and are, are coming back and pump trades on the short side that are starting to, they've gone above the, say the Bollinger Bands and then starting to return. So we're not going to look at the latter because we're on a spot trade. So let's look at divergence, which is a disagreement between the indicators and the price action. We're going to look, we're going to look for bullish divergence. See here the, the price action went down, but I don't know, stochastic most in the uh, OBV on balance value, I think that one is, most likely went up. And this is advanced, so if you're if you're new to spot trading, you might want to blow this off and listen to what I say next. But I'm going to go ahead, for some of my OGs, go over divergence a little bit, because a lot of us like to use it. And this has some predictive value. It's not incredibly consistent, but it's, it's again, way better than nothing. So here's my bullish divergence, which probably went off at 3 a.m. Most likely, I would not have seen this. But if you're in a different time zone, say if you're up early on the East Coast at 6 a.m., maybe you saw this and you get a really nice run up here, you know, a 10% move. You can trade this on Coinbase. It's pretty easy. Now, where do you get out? Um, when I do spot trading, I'm looking to get two, three, four, five percent, somewhere between two and five percent, usually three. And if you pile up three percent wins, you can improve your balance pretty quickly. So I would have looked at this and seen resistance. Let me use this line here. See where this touches multiple times. This is resistance. This would be a pretty, uh, a riskier exit. Um, we've got it again here a little before that. Right about here. This is more an art than a science. But again, you can see multiple touches here. 
a few of them, you know, die out and then a couple of them go beyond it. And then I'd say maybe another area here. This one is less defined. So when I'm looking at that resistance on these, I usually choose the middle. So this is the one I probably would have chosen. I would have gotten in right about here. and probably gotten out at this one here. And I, I set my take profits right after, you know, right after I make the trade, right, af right after it's accepted. On spot trade, I try to use, I try to get in with limit orders. Um, on my leverage trading, I use, I usually use a market. But this one would have gotten out, you know, eight hours later with almost 7%. That's a great day trade. So uh, I might've taken this lower value be a little more cautious you know that would have been you know five percent that's that's a really good day trade as well so all right any questions on divergence before we look at something else all right let's say cj am i interested in divergence looks a little too weird not comfortable with that i want to trade with the trend the trend is my friend well, I use super trend for that kind of thing. And then I use the RSI and the squeeze momentum. I've used different indicators. I think I had the MACD in here and I've had, I don't know, can you remember the one before that? Maybe the MFI, the money flow index. So, you know, figure out what works for you. Um, we've got this buy signal that triggered back here. On Wednesday afternoon, obviously that caught that big move. Um, we had a buy signal here. I probably would have used this as as my exit. I actually I probably would have right about here because I wouldn't have had this information yet. So I would have gone right about here. And that would have been. you know, almost a 3% move. Taking this one, I might've tried to catch one of these, see if it would have retraced back to where these would have gone. I'd still be in that trade. Didn't go my way. Um, you know what, actually I probably wouldn't have taken this one because I don't have, I don't have confirmation. So it would have printed, the buy would have gone out, come out after this candle, but this one would have been trending down. So I'm gonna look at the current candle see that the RSI is trending down. I have no confirmation here with momentum, so I probably don't take that trade. Where on this one, this buy signal, you've got the Mac, we got the RSI moving up and we're in the green on the squeeze momentum. So when you're trend trading, it's usually helpful to have you know, two or more confirmations. But to be candid, I don't do a lot of trend trading. I like the, I like the dips and the pullbacks, so. Um, and the next buy signal, each one of these buy signals is printing after a pretty big move. So I probably would have gotten in on this one. Looks like I have confirmation. But I would have gone for this area up here, probably. Let me move that up. As my exit, and I'd still be in that trade. I just missed it. So, but, you know. It only triggered uh, late this morning. That's not bad. I'm a day trader, not an hour trader. I don't, I don't mind if I'm in a trade half a day. Um, okay, any questions on super trend? All right, and then the last strategy, the one that's worked best for me the last couple summers, summers, this summer, the last couple of months, is the uh, this RSI strategy. So what I'm looking for uh, on the long side, and we don't have any examples of it. You know what? I'm going to skip this for now because this is there's just no good examples of it. I'll show this to you on the next one. Okay, let's um, let's check out of XYO and go back to Altcoin Alert. And well, before I do that, any questions on XYO? We'll look at the RSI in the next one. Okay. So other sorts include uh, the guys were talking on the on the Tuesday 
a Zoom call. I think Brendan mentioned he likes the social activity sort. I've used this off and on. Some of the other folks I know like this one, and I'm looking to match that with trading activity. So when I see fire or thumbs up on both of those, I usually want to check them out. And on this one, we're going to look at both bullish and bearish signals. Um, what I use Altcoin Alert for is to tell me what's happening, what's in play. I don't necessarily use it to tell me when to get in. Um, I have my technical analysis for that. You can, there are functions through the Slack program that can help you with that, but I prefer to use charts. And I'm trying to show you guys, you know, better entries. So, so let's go to KNC. This is something I've been trading lately. And let's go to the five. Go to my list. Find KNC. It's a good idea to keep a list on coins that you like to trade, or maybe all the coins that you're going to trade in a certain one or two exchanges. I started in Binance a couple of years ago, so most of my charts are Binance, even though I can't use it anymore. Um, but it has the highest volume usually, so the charts are, are solid. All right, KNC, and it's trending up. It's on the bottom of the Bollinger Band, which could be the beginning of a dip sequence, but we don't really have a bubble here. It's just going sideways. Um, and we're only 2% between the Bollinger Bands. So that's not usually indicative of great activity. And again, no. Here's a dip sequence here. It there's a squeeze here and it bubbles out. Usually it'll it'll squeeze and it'll just start to go down. This this bubble went up first and then down. And we have multiple dips. One, two, three, and kind of a fourth one here. I probably would have gotten in around here a little too soon. So it goes against me a little bit. And for my leverage trading, I just want 1% because I'm going to be at 10x leverage. So that's a 10% 10% win. I love 10% wins. And so I'm out right here, probably. If not, um, I'm out probably here. So I'm in this one, say, 9 to 11 hours, and I'm picking up 10%. So I like that. But that's not what we have at the moment. You can set a price alert support here. We're, we're there right now. So you want to go to your next support, which looks to me to be right around here at, um, you know, say, 73 cents. You can right click here and set that alert if you want. On the 15 minute chart with our indicators, let's look at divergence first. We're going to look at both longs and shorts. And all these did well, um, but some of these shorts did not. This one, yeah, I'm probably stopped out on that one. Yeah, the shorts are not good on this, on divergence. When there's a hard spike up, you'll get a few divergences triggered, but you know the market will just ignore them and usually keep going, and, and sometimes keep going. Divergence works best when you have this action on a chart and uh, KNC pumped too hard. I was hoping it had, had more of a gradual move, but because sometimes you'll get this move here and then it'll dip a little bit enough to get that, that one to 2% move on a chart, which for me is a, a 10 X leverage is a good, a good move. Like this is a good example here. Let's say I took this one. Um, well, four in the morning. This one's at 7.15, which is about when I usually start trading. So that would have triggered about here. And I'm out, you know, in, in, in about an hour. So that one was good. This one was good. Yeah, same thing with these first two. These first three here are losses, most likely. So... Do I want to, uh, I'm back testing a couple, uh, two or three days here. Do I want to take that, you know, use divergence as an approach? And I'm going to set that aside for a moment and look at my my super trend. 
Super Trend tends to do better, you know, with the bigger moves. And this sell did well from Wednesday. This one did too. Yeah, I would have gotten out on that one. This one. Actually, what what would happened here is my my trading program would have triggered an additional purchase at around the two percent against me, and then it drops here. So what happens is my my second trade is profitable. My first one's a small loss. Overall, when you average them out, they're you know it's profitable. It's called uh, ladder buying or dollar cost averaging. Um, and then you have the buy here that does really well. So I would go on this one if you're trading leverage with both directions. The super trend seems to be better than divergence. So I'll show you how to do an alert on the super trend. Right click, add an alert. If you're trading spot, you just want to use the super trend buy. Um, if you want to just want to short it, you know, we haven't talked about it yet, but weekends tend to have lower volume and markets move down more than they move up. Usually it's just lower volume. So that's the uh, the short option and then direction change for both directions, which, which, which is what I use most of the time. Once per bar close, uh, this was a social activity sort. And I have the notifications. I'd probably go with this three notes reverb, click create. And that's how you do that. Okay, so the final option, and we have some good examples here, is the RSI. What I want to do with the RSI is have it, when it pumps above 70, this value here on the top of the, uh, you know, the channel, and it drops below, then that's usually indicative of a down move. And when it drops below 30 and comes back up, that's usually indicative of a of a dip and a return. So we'll track we'll track these using a, a vertical line. We'll show you. I think this one would have triggered or been close to it. And there's a nice move down. So that's a win. We've got this one here that dips below 30 and triggers right about here, goes sideways for a bit, and then eventually goes up nicely. There's another dip here breaks back up, and again, a nice move up. I don't think this one would have triggered. I got this one here that goes up and then back down again. Uh, this one doesn't look good. Probably get in here, get that move up and then down again. I might have been in profit with, a, with one ladder buy, I'm not sure. We get another sim similar one. Yeah, maybe we'll look at this. We'll just index. Yeah, let's, let's look at this. Um, this is one of my alerts and I'll show it to you. Then maybe I'll take a trade. So I'm gonna go to my alerts. It's on SNX synthetics. I'm gonna click on that. And this is the this is the channel I create to generate alerts. What happened here is that is it nudged the 70 and dipped a little bit. So I don't know. I don't have my screen set up for the uh, the software I'm using. I did talk about it last week or the week before. I'm gonna make a quick trade here. But essentially, I'm making a, a synthetic short at the moment, not trading, not financial advice. You can follow this or not if you want. All right. So I showed you some examples on the last one we were looking at. So I'm going to show you how, to, how I set an alert to go both directions. I'm going to right click on the RSI, add an alert. Instead of crossing, I'm going to choose entering a channel. The top value is 70, bottom value is 30, once per bar close, and then social activity sort, and notifications, whatever you want. 
And so whenever it goes above the 70 and then comes back down, which like it just did, then this alert will go off and let me know. And I have a different notification for this one than I do the others. But, but I think I use a chirpy on this one. Yeah, this one here. So I know it's that it's that strategy or that setup. And then 30, if it dips below 30 and comes back up, then that would also trigger the alert. So and you can click on the alert section and it'll show you your log. You just click on the log and it'll take you to that that time frame and that um and that coin. If if it's an alert with a different strategy like a divergence, you have to actually click that on usually. But I have the RSI on pretty much all the time. So, so I took a synthetic short. We'll see how it plays out. Um, I know I kind of bounced around two different coins on the RSI thing. Uh, any questions on on that approach? How I discovered this was I noticed that on the 15 minute chart when this happened, that often looked like a one, two, three dip. In this case, a one, two, three pump on the five minute chart. <laughs> so it's kind of sort of similar to setting up one, two, three dip alerts on the five minute chart. Now on the pump side, I think I can see if I remember how to do this. All right, I've inverted the chart. So it looks more like a dip sequence. So you have a one, two, I'm getting in a little early, really on the second dip. So it's not perfect, but it's it's a dipped and it's coming, it was coming back up a little bit. So that's why I did that. But remember I did it on the on the short side. So I hope I didn't confuse you. All right, any questions on SNX before we look at look at something else? Okay. So we looked at social activity, AA score. I'll usually look at this one hour projected range. I get something like three or four percent here with green on both the upper and the lower. I'll, I'll look at that, but it's rare. I haven't seen that. It's probably been over a month since I've seen one of those. Another sort I like is the long term sentiment. This is similar to the social activity. I'm gonna I probably need to refresh. Okay. okay, we'll go long on this first. I'm not sure why not enough tweets is showing up. So what I want to see is the long-term sentiment is what people are talking about on Twitter. Elder impulse is a technical indicator. You can hover over these questions and, and read more about them. But when I get sentiment and technicals lining up, I want to check it out. And since I trade leverage, I need to look at something I know is on a leverage exchange and on the software I'm using. Uh, that one is not. I know STX is. I'm not seeing. Okay, KNC we looked at already. Radium. I think I can trade that one. No. Shows up at a zero X. Maker. Okay, I make I've got bullish on long term sentiment and elder impulse. This is something I've traded, I think earlier today or yesterday. So let's check it out. All right, we'll turn these off, start from the beginning. Five minute. And um, that's on the top of the, towards the top of the Bollinger Band. We're a little late on this one. A little bit of dip action here. Not really a good structure anywhere here. And the market's in a bull, in a bull trend, a bull market, which is always more fun to trade. Uh, you can do what we call squeeze trades. When these start to squeeze together and the, the uh, the markets or the, uh, the the candles tend to to blow off above the SMA line and towards the top of the 
Bollinger Band, you know, maybe getting here. Go for the Bollinger Band, about 1%, and you, just, you can pile some of these up. But it's been a while since we've had a consistent bull market, a couple of years, so I haven't traded, I haven't done many squeeze, squeeze trades, unless it's like something the uh, super trend shows me. Okay, we do have some support here. If you want to do a price alert right around 11.51, I like maker around numbers. No, no cents, just dollars. Um, all right, so let's go to 15 minute our indicators. Yeah, I, I was liking this at least beginning, beginning here. I don't know about this one. Well, yeah, I would have, with an additional purchase, I would have gotten out of these. This one did really well. And here's, you're starting to get some of this action. You catch this bullish divergence, nice move up, another one. Yeah, that would have been good for me. 1% move, 10x leverage, good stuff. So divergence looks really good here. So I'll show you how to do a, a divergence alert. You have to do two if you're trading both directions. Right click, alert on divergence. Uh, the negative is for the first one that comes up in the list. So I usually just go with that. This is my long-term sentiment, negative. And I think I've got one for this already, so I'm not gonna set it again. And then for the uh, bullish divergence, click positive once per bar close. Now keep it open keep it open until you turn it off. I'd forgotten about this. Um, most of my alerts are open ended because I have the you know premium plan, but you can set these to stop at a particular particular time of the day. So today's the twenty eighth. I usually keep my alerts on depending on what's going on in my uh, my personal life to about nine p.m. So. I can do that, and then that'll turn it off at uh, 9 p.m., but I'll leave it open-ended for now. And going a little out of order here, but if you don't have this divergence indicator and you want to trade this strategy, you know, type in divergence on your indicators on TradingView. This is the one I use for many indicators. I've got a backup one that non-repaints. Um, the downside of what I showed you is that this will repaint, which means if it gets new information, it'll move this over. Um, this is frustrating to many traders because, you know, you, you think you're, you're, you have specific information, then it changes on you. Um, but I think that the ease of this indicator and that I can, that essentially groups together other indicators is, is worth that that function and then the, the the money management in my trading software more more often than not will will uh, cover up any any things that go against me okay so that's divergence any questions on that i'll right, we'll take a quick look at super trend since we're here um that sell did well this buy did okay Probably additional purchase on that sell, this buy, same thing. What I mean by that is, is it doesn't get my 1%, so it drops here. At the 2%, I get another purchase, and then they average out, and I get out around here. So, and this buy is triggered. We don't, we're probably still in that trade. All right, so that's super trend, and our RSI options. Let's look at our horizontal, our vertical line. And that one did not so good. Well, yeah, I would have gotten out there with an additional purchase. So that's okay with me. We've got another pump above the 70 here. And it crosses right about there. So that's an excellent entry on that short. Um, got a long coming up here. Uh, again, I'm probably an, addi an, addi an additional purchase on this. Yeah, so I would have been out there. 
And that triggers a short, nice move down. So you can see how this RSI approaches um, is pretty accurate. The downside is, at least on this 15 minute, I've tried this on a five and it didn't work as well. The 15 minute, at least in my experience, is a sweet spot, but it doesn't trigger that often. So, you know, I, we're looking at three days of, yeah, give or take, and yeah, all day Wednesday, all day Thursday, and you know, most of the day today. So just under three days of activity, and it's only triggered maybe five times, and that's you know the 24-hour period. So I'm working on another strategy that has some resemblances to this, and automating that. Uh, I'll let you guys know how that how that goes. Um, but for now, I'm trading it manually, doing pretty well with it. Any questions or comments on Maker? Well, sometimes I look for a short of the day. I think I can squeeze one in. I'll go through this quickly because we're uh, we're at just under 40 minutes, which is where I like to get out. So I'm going to reload. And I find the best one to, to look for a short is this long-term sentiment. Look for bearish instead of bullish. We're looking for bearish on long term and on the elder. Uh, FTM is bearish on both. So we'll take a quick look at FTM. Okay, on the five minutes, instead of a one, two, three dip, we want something like this you know, a big pump and then a drop. Another one here. So these don't really have a, a one, two, three sequence. This one kind of does. One, two, three. Yeah, actually. So this would have been a good entry here. And yeah, you probably get, oh, this, this chart's not moving that much. Yeah, you'd probably still be in that trade. It's not a good example. Uh, let's look at the 15 minute. And we'll look at divergence, see how bearish is doing. This bearish here looks good from Wednesday. This one here. Yeah, so most of these are, are doing really well. All these bearish ones did well. I think I'm going to set this one up real quick. I'm going to right click, add an alert. Negative is selected. That's the one I want. Once per bar close. And this is long-term sentiment, which is the one I use the most. So that's like my first listing. Notifications. I'm going to change my sound to three notes reverb, which is what I use for divergence. And I have the usual setup on my notifications. I click create. I'm good to go on that one. Okay, if you want to use the trend as your friend, super trend, instead, uh, the cell here was not good. Uh, this cell was pretty good. The cell, uh, you're probably still in that one. So the cells have not done well, but since I have this up as an example, I'll do a quick alert on it or show you how to do it. Instead of super trend buy, you go super trend sell, once per bar close. And again, long-term sentiment buy. And yeah, that it will retain the information from your most recent alert unless you change it. So I like that the divergence was way better than this on the last three days. So I'm not going to do this one. And then we can look at our RSI to see where it dropped below the 70. That happened here. And looks like I would have caught that one. I don't know. I don't think that would have been profitable. So in this scenario, I'll probably get stopped out on this one. But this entry on a short looks good. Goes sideways and then down. So that would have been a win. And I think that's the last one. Yeah, we don't have any other shorts on that. So. It looks like divergence is the best for, for a short. If I'm only looking for shorts, I find that's the one I use the most. 
Um, if I want to go both directions, at least lately, the RSI has been the best, and then Super Trend's been my last choice. Any questions on FTM or anything we've talked about? Very well. I'll stop it here. General. Oh, I, we have sorry, a question. CJ. Go ahead. Yes. Um, so if I, and this might be, I realize you're not an accountant, but if I go, if I would switch over to day trading, then you're having a lot more buys and sells. How does that affect taxes? Oh, the last thing I want to talk Crazy. about is taxes. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> That's but, what I'm scared uh, about. If I can, I... <laughs> to generally answer your question, uh, I, I have trading friends of mine who will buy and will not sell for over a year so they can mm -hmm. um, you know, get that, that long-term tax option. Day trading yeah. is just like any other income. So, you know. Okay. If you're, if you're driving an Uber, if you're uh, <laughs> you know, selling on, on eBay or whatever, it's the same. So that's how it's taxed. So if, if you decide to switch to day trading is this was you have to really be focused on it and do it a lot would be my guess yeah so you can it depends if you have a full-time job you're going to have limited options to trade and you mm -hmm. probably need something automated for that um which is what i use anyway even though my day is available to trade as much as I want. So this is, okay. you know, crypto is what I do for a living. Day trading is a significant part of it. It's not the only thing I do, but um, right. I don't think you need to necessarily, if you can, if you have reasonably good access to your phone, you can, mm -hmm. you can day trade with um, some kind of software. There's one I work with uh, that I've mentioned the Crypt Nation guys. It's not ready yet. So I can't really talk about it in detail. There are other third party options like three commas and that comes to mind. And that's the only one I've really tried to use. I found it complicated. Sure. So I don't recommend it. Okay. So that kind of thing okay. can, can help you day trade, say before work and after work and during lunch, you know, and if you want to, but most, most people who have full-time jobs will do swing trading and try to get bigger moves on, on spot charts or on low leverage. So. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. Any other questions, comments, inquiries? Okay, we'll wrap it up here. If you're watching on the recording, thank you for that. Hope to see you live next time. Check out the opportunities in the pinned comment that help fund the channel. If you are a Carbon member, um, you will need to exit this Zoom and click on the new, the new link starting at uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. See you there. Have a good weekend, guys.